All right, so Foundations Math 20, uh, Section 2.4, we'll be talking about uh, uh, angles in triangles and angles with parallel lines and transversals. And today, Section 2.4, we're talking about angle properties in polygons. So uh, if we take a look at the title, uh, angle properties, uh, so obviously we're looking at angles, we're looking at what, what those angles tell us, uh, what those angles are like, or the sum of them, or uh, the size of them, what, what, what can we know about those angles. And polygons is, uh, a polygon is a, a, a closed figure, okay, so it's a shape uh, that is closed, it's not open, all the sides uh, connect, and uh, it's, it just has obviously more than one side. So poly is more than one, and of course the, the smallest, the fewest number of sides in a polygon that we can have is, is three. Uh, if we had two, it wouldn't be closed or the lines would be just right on top of each other. So we can't have one, we can't have a closed figure with one side, we can't have a closed figure with two sides. Uh, three is kind of where it starts. So I'm going to focus on this chart a little bit, uh, mostly for the lesson. And I want to uh, talk about, we're going to lead up to this last line right here, the sum of interior angles. Now we know what the sum of interior angles is for a triangle. We talked about that last day, right? So all the angles of a triangle add up to what? What is, what is that? 180 degrees. That is absolutely correct. Now let's just notice a few things about the triangle and see if we can identify a pattern going forward with other polygons, okay, with more sides. So the number of sides in a triangle is three. The number of diagonals from one vertex to all of the other vertexes, and then again, diagonals are lines that travel through the shape. So if you start at a point on the triangle here, let's say, and you try and draw a diagonal, that's going to coincide with one of the sides. It's not going to be a true diagonal. So really, we have zero diagonals in a triangle. The number of triangles that are formed in a triangle is one. Now you're thinking, that's kind of a strange property that we're going to look at. But yeah, that's going to help us as we move forward, as you can see. So this is the data that we have for a triangle. Three sides, zero diagonals, one triangle can be formed by a triangle, and the sum is 180. Let's take a look at a polygon with four sides. So that is a rectangle or a square or a parallelogram, rhombus. All those have four sides. So let's talk about a rectangle here. And uh, the number of sides is four. Yep. Am I still frozen? I'm sorry. The number of sides is four. Uh, the number of diagonals that can be drawn is uh, from one vertex. Again, from one vertex. Not, not from all the vertexes, but from one vertex is one. Okay, we can draw one from one vertex. The number of triangles, okay, so this line is a bit weird. Uh, the number of triangles, that means the number of triangles that can be made when you draw your diagonals. So notice something, and I'll maybe zoom in here a bit. But if you notice on this rectangle that with one diagonal, I have two triangles. One there and one there, you see that? Yeah. Okay, so this is very interesting. Uh, with two triangles, you can actually use the data from the, the first column, the triangle column, and what you would see is that if this is indeed a rectangle, those two are 90, and then these angles, we don't know what they are, but we know that all of these have to add up to what? Yeah, half of this. So each triangle, the angles, the interior angles have to add up to 180. So there's 180 and another 180. You see that? So all of the angles, when you add them all up, the angles in a four-sided polygon is what? Let's see if you're correct on that. Let's see. Where is my little... There we go. Ah, 360 is correct. Good job. So we have two triangles worth of angles. All right. Now this is going to make the rest go pretty smooth. So if we have a five-sided figure, a pentagon, uh, it doesn't have to be a regular one. I'm going to talk about what a regular pentagon is a little bit later. But a pentagon has five sides. There are two diagonals that can be drawn from one vertex. And so that makes one, two, three triangles. And so the, the sum of all of the interior angles, and if you don't believe me about this, think about this, OK? So you're saying, I know, Mr. Maxwell, this is the interior angle. But yes, if you take this little angle and this little angle and this little angle and you add those up, then you get that one big interior angle. So yes, there's only five interior angles. But you can split some of these interior angles up into, so there's, there's one angle, here's two, that makes this interior angle. Here's two, here's one, and here's three. That's okay, that's all right. Because I have one, two, three triangles, so 
the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon is going to be what? What do you think? It's going to be 180 times 3. This is 180 times 1, 180 times 2 so far, and this is 180 times 3. Makes sense, the triangles. Okay, really quickly, the last column, we have a hexagon that has six sides. There are three diagonals making one, two, three, four triangles. So if you're catching on to the pattern, looks like it should be four times 180, and that's absolutely correct. Okay, all right, I'm going to zoom back out here, and we're going to take a look at this chart as a whole. And now n-agon, okay, an n-agon, that is a uh, polygon with n sides. Now we're going to start to generalize, okay? So an n-agon has n sides. The number of diagonals that can be drawn, just look at the relationship here between these ones, okay? It's obviously 3 less than the number of sides, so the number of diagonals is n minus 3. What about the number of triangles in an n-agon? 3 compared to 1, 4 compared to 2, 5 to 3, 6 to 4, what's the pattern there? Yeah, that looks like n, the number of sides, minus 2. Very good. And so the sum of the interior angles appeared to be the number of triangles that would be formed times 180, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do we got down here then? This is? N minus yes, or I'll write the number first, 180 degrees times N minus 2. That is excellent. Now this is a pattern that we can use for any polygon. Let's say we have 10 sides. A 10-sided polygon. Was that a decagon, I guess? A decagon. And so we have uh, seven triangles that can be made. Sorry, uh, seven diagonals, and we have eight triangles that can be made. So this is going to be 180 degrees times 8 minus 2, or 180 degrees times... I'm sorry, 10, 10 minus 2. Yeah, thank you. 10 minus 2 is 8. So 180 times 8 is what? That's 800, and uh, what's 8 times 80? Uh, 640. Six, 640, so 800 plus 640, uh, 1440, 1440. Yeah, 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 go ahead if you need to go. All right, so you see how that works? All right, so girls, make sure you finish watching this lesson, okay? All right, let's you finish the notes and the assignments. All right, so the sum of interior angles of an anagon, the sum, that's the adding of all the interior angles, is going to be this right here. So let's uh, make sure you have that written down. 180 times n minus 2. The sum of the exterior angles of a polygon. Now, we talked about what the sum of the exterior angles for a triangle would be, right? Okay, so that adds up to 3, 360, right? Remember that from yesterday? The sum of the angles are 360. What about this uh, uh, rectangle here? Well, we have 90, 90, 90, and 90. What's, what's 90 times 4? Oh, gee, that's 360 as well. Okay. Now, notice something, that as the number of sides increases, the value of the exterior angles decrease. Decrease, yeah. So the more sides you have, the, um, the each exterior angle gets smaller, right? Now, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to work on this question in a second, but notice the stop sign here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides, right? Look at the exterior angles. You see, they're getting small, aren't they? So there's more of them, but they're getting smaller. And so if you increase the number but also get smaller, there is a bit of a consistency there. So the exterior angles... Here are 360. Come to the high school okay, so the sum of the exterior, uh, I'm just going to write this down here, is 360 here, 360 here, and it does make sense. We could do some more testing, but it does make sense that if the number of angles increases but the size of each angle decreases, that it's, it's reasonable to think that this number could be uh, consistent, and indeed it is. Okay? So it doesn't matter what the, what the number of sides are, the sum is always going to be 360. Okay, boys, you need to be on that thing right there. Maybe, maybe slam that down. Yeah, no, right down. Click it right off, please. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to be on your Chromebooks while the teacher right now. Okay, especially when you're laughing at the screen. That's a bit of a, that's a bit of a signal for me that we shouldn't probably be doing something on there. All right. <clears throat>
for a regular polygon, all sides and angles are equal. All right, that's a regular polygon. So I've mentioned regular before, regular. All sides and all angles are equal. Jot that down in your notes, write it down, nobody's writing. Write that down, regular polygon. All sides and angles are equal, and I mentioned the stop sign before, uh, it's eight sides, and all these sides are equal. Okay, they're all equal. Now what's important for a regular polygon is that it's actually pretty easy to find the uh, size of each individual in interior angle because we just learned what the total sum of all the angles are. And so if you have the sum of all the angles and then you divide it evenly by the number of sides, which also corresponds to the number of angles that you have inside. So the number of sides is equal to the number of angles inside. So that's 180 times n minus two divided by n is the sum of each interior angle. All right, so that's your next one. Make sure you have that written down as well, please. Each interior angle in a regular polygon is given by this formula right here. Okay, take a moment to, uh, to write that down. Confirm this. All right, so let's confirm this here. Oh, my video. Frozen? Okay, no, good. All right, um, so let's take an octagon here, eight sides. So the sum of all the interior angles, eight minus two. So what's 180 times six? That's gonna be wow. 600, and six times wow. eight is 480. So 1,080 degrees, okay? So if you added up all of these angles together, you get 1,080 degrees. So if we divide by eight, so if we divide by eight, what do, what do we get? You can use a calculator for that, it's not a problem. So we've got it's going to be 100 and something, right? Because 800, and then... So that's 200 and... Uh, 280. So uh, 280 degrees divided by 8. So let's just do... Whoops, oh, let's get rid of this. So let's figure it out. 1080 divided by 8 is going to be 135. Very good. So each angle is 135 degrees. All right. Now let's let's think about that exterior angle bit, right? If this is 135 right here, then what is this exterior angle right here? That's going to be 45. Well, that's 180 minus 135. So what's 45 times 8? 360 degrees. Okay, so the sum of the exterior angles is 360, okay? All right, any questions so far? Okay. All right, so, um, yeah? Nope. All right. Uh, let's talk about what a convex polygon is, okay? Um, a, uh, a convex polygon is a polygon in which each interior angle is less than 180. So um, these, these polygons that we're talking about have to be convex. A non-convex polygon gets us into all sorts of troubles with the uh, interior angles and the exterior angles. So a non-convex polygon, the formulas that don't work for this. So it has to be a convex polygon, okay? Um, again, this interior angle, right, it's gonna be like, 270 degrees or something like that. So that's not going to, uh, that's not going to be, that's not going to work. Uh, and again, if we had all sorts of, you know, all sorts of uh, non-convex or concave angles, the interior angles here would be crazy. They wouldn't follow the pattern. So let me see that. So we'd have a bit of a, bit of a problem there. Okay, looks like a, a polka dot starfish there. Starfish with measles? I don't know. So what's the polka dot? Uh, we're not, we're not, we're, we're not concerned with the formula for a non-convex. No. No. Okay, key ideas, what you need to know. Uh, you can prove properties of angles in polygons using other angle properties that have already been proved. Okay, so again, we're talking about sum of interior and sum of exterior, and that's what we've worked with today. 
And so the sum of the measures of interior angles is 180 times n minus 2. Each interior angle is 180 times n minus 2 divided by n. And the sum of the measures of exterior angles in a convex polygon is 360. Okay, those are the important points for today's lesson, short lesson today. All right? All right, here is, uh, here's the homework for the entire chapter. Uh, you've been given 2, 1 to 2, 3. So here's 2, 4 and your review assignment. I'll just make this a little bit bigger for you. So you can see that in the back. So you are working on your 2.4 assignment here today. A tile surface? Yeah, to tile a surface? Yeah, I'll talk about that in a second.